What up, YouTube? Big Lou and Big Louise Coach Review back again with another review, and today we're here to do a little review. All the dripping revolution Ronin Competition Mechanical Tube Mod X2. That's right, this is the X2 Ronin Mod, and it's considered a competition mod. And I can see why, because this fucking thing hits hard. That's right, this is a hard hitting mechanical tube mod with a hybrid cap with an inner sleeve which wraps around your 18650 to prevent from hard shorts. Good ample venting down in the switch. You got three areas of venting in the switch and you got this sick deep engraving on the mechanical tube mod itself. Now this is made of naval brass. It's also uh, made in Tellurin copper as well. So if you're looking for copper, they have an even harder hitting copper mod Intel you're in copper and this I got to say I like it in the brass because to me when brass shines up It's just beautiful. It looks like gold, you know up top I got my Buddha version 2 really happy build in here I got a 20 gauge 5 wrap around a 3 millimeter and it's a great building deck sitting on top of here It's a 25 millimeter in diameter mechanical tube mod. So that means there is a slight lip at the RDA base where the 24 millimeter meets the 25 millimeter mechanical tube mod. Now, what makes this a competition mechanical tube mod? Well, Naval Brass is a very nice uh, aesthetically made metal. So when you're using Naval Brass, it's strong and it's conductive and it works really well. The switch has got silver plated copper contacts as well in the switch. And it's just overall a really nice piece to hold in the hand, to show off to friends, to take pictures on Instagram. You know, it, you build like yourself a nice little social platform having a very decorative uh, mechanical tube mod. But aside from it being decorative, it's also very hard hitting. It does work. It does perform. It does what it's supposed to do. And that is when you hit that button, it's supposed to glow your coils like an angry son of a bitch. And that's it. So I gotta say, Really, really good mechanical tube mod. 169 bucks, not that bad in price in comparison to their previous modeled and created and released mechanical tube mods they came out with in the past. They were pretty pricey. And then they started gearing towards the lower end price uh, vantages for people who just couldn't afford those really high platformed prices. So this at $169 is actually really quite worth it. You know, if you got a 24 millimeter RDA you want to throw it on here it's great it works really nice and having that deep engraving on the mechanical tube mod this one is a skull with a gas mask and there's like guns and barbed wire and all sorts of shit in the background with angel wings I thought this was a really cool design and calling it the Ronin competition mod I like the way they use the font for Ronin I like that boxy impact with the sharp edges and points to it. It almost kind of looks like a heavy metal lettering from back in the day, you know? <clears throat> But I gotta say, this is a really nice mechanical tube mod. They put the American flag at the switch on the bottom button, only to let you know this is an American made product, made and manufactured and designed here in the good old US of A. So it is a quality product for the right price. They're not asking for too much on price on this mechanical tube mod. So it's really nice. I love how they got the top hat design on here. Kind of like the AV mods, they had the top hat design, which you basically have an insulation in there as well to prevent shorts because some hybrid mechanical tube mods need to have that in there and this has it in there and also the sleeve that's on the inside is removable the 
18650 sleeve. And down at the bottom at the switch and button area, it'll display your serial number with the three vent holes and the silver plated uh, copper contact down below as well. So it is very conductive. Now I have tried squeezing an, uh, a 2700 battery in here. It didn't fit, you know, so I was a little disappointed because, you know, 2700 batteries are a thing right now. But what they're doing is they're keeping the diameter at 25 millimeters and you know, in order to have a 2700, you have a wider diameter mechanical tube mod to accompany a 2700 battery. So therefore, this is for the 18650 crowd out there. But I must say, 18650s have been around for a while and they've always performed really well before the 2700s and the 21700s. So they have performed and they have been having great output and a great response. So what I'd like to do is I like to dive up close, show you guys all the bits and pieces of this mechanical tube mod, and then you'll have my final thoughts. So here we got the Ronin mods by Drippin Revolution, DNR. That's right, this company actually gives me a really nice case every time they send me a mechanical tube mod. This was not purchased by me, this was actually sent to me by the company. Uh, on it, it's got this little rubberized handle with this uh, rope. I don't know if I'll ever use it. You know, I guess you could put it around your wrist. I don't know what guy is actually gonna walk around an event with this around his wrist, but you know, whatever, I guess, whatever, you know. But uh, if you, once you open the lid, it's gonna show you the mechanical tube mod and all its glory, okay? Uh, they always give it to me wrapped in a Ziploc bag. I've been using it, but I put it back in there with the Silka pouch, just so it doesn't patina. Um, comes with a certificate of authenticity. So this is the Ronin X2 Ambition in brass. I have serial number 011. The date it was made was December 5th, 2017 on the authenticity card it does have their web address made in the usa their ronin logo and on the opposite side it does have the warranty uh, information as well as the warning opening the contents of the package it's a ziploc i like to just um just kind of like move the ziploc like that to get it to open because i have gigantic hands Looking at the mechanical tube mod, 94.69 millimeters. That's right, 94.69 millimeters. That's with the top hat completely threaded in and the tube itself. At the top 510 connection, I got a measurement of 23.97 millimeters. So I got 23.97 millimeters in width at the 510 connection. The tube itself comes in at the same measurement as well. So let's just call it 24 millimeters. Remove your top 510 hat. We'll check that out up close in a few. Down below you can see our silver plated contact pin and inside it's dark in there because there is a Delrin insulator which you remove it's in there nice and tight very nice threading on this mechanical tube mod very very nice and down below at the bottom you'll notice we have a serial number mine is 011 we have three holes for venting and our flathead silver contact down below now this is one of those mechanical tube mods that requires you to use a screwdriver to remove the contact simply because the switch housing and the tube are one piece, okay? So it's just, the only thing that gets removed is the top portion of the 510 connection. So just stick a flathead screwdriver, feel where your contact is, try not to scratch or damage it. You know, one way to do this is just look at how your contact, the line for the flathead is, and insert your flathead in that same kind of direction. Once you feel it, 
just start turning it. And you'll notice the switch on the bottom is going to start popping out. The button will pop out. Once you feel like you've un uh, once you feel like you've loosened it all the way, just remove your button. Now looking into the switch housing itself, you'll notice that there are three guides. There's a guide here, a guide here, and a guide here. The reason for these guides is so that when you insert your button in there, this is our button, you'll notice that there are guide cutouts on there. We have one, two, and three. So when you fit your button on, you to find those guides and it will drop in. This is to ensure that the switch button will go straight in and out. And they have a very deep engraving of the American flag and saying Ronin X2 Mods. Very nicely done on the button, I gotta say. So the engraving is very deep and very pronounced. So it gives it a lot of character, basically. Looking at the button up close, you'll notice that the center shaft starts off wide and then tapers down into a point where the threads are. That's a cool little design. Basically at the widest point, that's where the magnet is going to sit. So your magnet's gonna sit there and you'll notice it starts coning off down into the thread area. What I like to do with the magnets to make sure the polarity is correct without them hitting each other, if this magnet is attracting on the opposite side this way, I know that when I flip this, they're going to repel each other that way. So I know this is how it's going to sit in my switch housing. So I'm just gonna drop this magnet in there, knowing that it's going to repel. Now this is my silver plated copper contact with the flat head on it. You notice that I have next to no arcing. There's literally no arcing on here and there's been plenty of usage on this mechanical mod. Maybe down into the center, there might be arcing in the center where the threading is, but visibly on the outside, there is no arcing at all. So it's very quite clean. So when I go to put this switch back together again, I basically insert my screwdriver onto the contact and I know the polarity is correct on my magnet because I've already placed it in there with the correct area of knowing which way it goes in. Now I feel the polarity resistance in the button. So once you find the threads, you just simply want to just start turning your contact. But you got to make sure your button, like in this case, has to line up with the guides. So you got to find my guides again. There we go. And screw it in. You know. So once you know it's lining up, then just take your flathead screwdriver and screw it in. So I know it's gonna go in that way. It's following the guides. Line up my screwdriver with the contact and get it on there. Try not to scratch up your contact. It can be easy to do that. But once you're in there and you're threading, then you're good. Button sitting in there. It might be a little too in there. So I'm gonna make it flush with the tube. There we go. Not too flush, but backed out just enough. Insert your 18650 Delrin sleeve for protection. Got to make sure you get it in there good below the threading. Now, for those of you who want to see the actual laser etching, of the logo here, you'll see that we have a gun there, we have angel wings, we have a skull with a gas mask on them. Going to another gun up top with angel wings, 
really cool. We got barbed wire surrounding and going through the eyelet of the gas mask. Pretty cool. And then down below, Ronin is cut very nicely. It says Ronin Competition Mod. Very nice. And I like in the switch housing itself, they got these channels right here. These channels actually help you grip the mechanical tube mod. Now, I know most people would think you could loosen this, but this doesn't loosen at all. This is just one unit, and the seam here is purposely put there. Okay, so it's not just a straight shaft here. There is a seam here, and there is a reason for that seam to basically give separation from the top and bottom. Now, looking at the top hat of the 510 connection, we do have some grooves that are cut into the top hat right there, which make it a little easier when removing your top hat. The threads are beautiful on the top hat. Very nicely cut, very clean threading. No issues there, no problems there. Very nicely done. 510 connection. It's got a slight little angle to the top 510 connection, which is nice. And on the inside, they continue that Delrin insulator, which it's a little concave, which is actually pretty nice. which it'll ensure the vapor using it, let's say in a competition, it'll ensure that there'll be some battery safety going on there for them. Just a little peace of mind. So once again, the reason for that bottom seam is because there is a seam up top. It just gives the mechanical mod a little balance and presentation. So it's actually pretty cool. Very high shiny, high gloss naval brass, very nicely done, very conductive, very hard hitting. Excellent mechanical tube mod. So I'm going to insert my battery in positive facing down. I'm using the Pegasus Vapor Academy batteries. This is the Type E. Uh, very low density, ultra high discharge of 30 amps. They're 1500 milliamp per hour. Recommended usage on regulated batteries or regulated devices anywhere between 150 to 225 watts in series. Uh, analog single use, meaning mechanical tube mods. They recommend the lowest you go on a build is a 0.15 or 0.12. If you're using a analog or a mechanical parallel box mod, then the lowest you can go with two batteries in parallel formation are 0.07 and the lowest to 0 0.06 ohms. So I insert my battery in, positive facing the switch. Insert my top hat, thread it in. I'm not threading it in all the way because I want to thread in my RDA. I'm rocking currently my MechLife uh, Apocalypse 24 mil RDA so it could sit flush on there. If it's not sitting flush, back it out. Screw in your RDA more and then screw in your top hat. And there you have it. So you guys have seen every little bit and piece of this mechanical tube mod straight up close and personal. You've seen the case it comes in, the warranty card, the authenticity card, everything. Everything you need to know and understand about this mechanical mod you've seen. Now, what are my overall thoughts on this mechanical tube mod? It has a decent weight with the battery in it. It looks great. It does not patina quickly. It's, it's one of those metals of naval brass. Sometimes naval brass can patina quick and sometimes it can take a little progression to get there and I've noticed this mechanical tube mod when polishing it I don't really need to polish it that fast or that quickly you know I could use it for a week until I start noticing a little patina action from the sweat of my hands but other than that it does not tarnish quick which is nice to see uh, when it does tarnish the actual logo will pop even more if you do decide you are gonna polish it after it's patina it very darkly or uh, over time as it patinas it gets darker and darker then if you decide you're gonna polish it I would suggest to people just to polish the center logo where the skull wings and guns are in the center so this way the logo 
pops immensely and it really is brighter. You could just use a Q-tip with some solution and just clean around the logo itself and the rest of the mod will be darker, therefore the logo will really pop out. And I think that is a point to make to people who are mech mod collectors that you do have that option. But other than that, you know, it's a really nice mechanical tube mod. It hits really well, it hits really hard, and it's at a great price at $169. You can't beat it, you know? And it's a comp mod. You know, not saying you can't use this mod or that mod in a competition, but it is well ventilated. It does have a nice uh, hit ratio for me so when i hit that button and vape on it it does cook the coils rather quickly especially for a brass mod i i, I would love to get this in a copper version the tellurian copper i think the tellurian copper would really really hit hard but I'm really happy that this company is releasing quality products and it is an American made product at an affordable price range. So for those of you who wanted to see it, here you go, the Ronin Competition X2, okay? 169 bucks, you just can't go wrong. I, I mean, you really can't. Great mechanical tube mod, great product, great company, you know, all the bells and whistles. So for me to YouTube, peace out, like, comment, and subscribe. I'm out of here, laters.